What's up guys, Justin Greenall here with 65drums.com. Today I'm gonna to talk about what you need to know before you play live with your electronic drum set. I'm just gonna go down a list of things that I have found helpful for me. So the first one, and this applies to both acoustic and electronic drums, I recommend that you always bring a drum rug. Very, very important to me. I remember one time I didn't bring a drum rug and I ended up playing a gig at a gazebo and the gazebo floor was just covered in this very, very ultra smooth concrete. I was sliding around that thing so much, I would have to pull different parts of the drum set back towards me um, multiple times throughout a song. Obviously that's a really, really extreme example, but having a drum rug, even it doesn't even have to be like a really nice drum rug. You can buy drum rugs for 130 bucks and that's way too much. Um, if you just find an old piece of carpet that doesn't look too ratty, you can use that as a drum rug. And also, depending on what kind of uh, material is on the bottom of your kick pedal, you could leave marks on the carpet of the venue you're going to be playing at. So sometimes it's even a courtesy just to bring your own carpet so that there's no damage and also that you have peace of mind that your drum set isn't just gonna go and just move around as you're playing. The next thing I recommend is turning down your cymbals a little bit. For me, I really like a lot of cymbals in my mix. I really like hearing the hi-hats that I'm crashing into. I really like having loud ride cymbals, crashes, all that great stuff. Um, but the problem is, in a mix with a whole band, that doesn't work out very well. And so you may be used to having a certain sound that you're hearing when you're playing in your basement, but when you're playing live with other musicians, what the sound man really needs you to send him is a kick and a snare signal. Those are the two most important parts of your drum set. And if they're being overridden by really loud crash cymbals, um, that's just not gonna help the sound of your entire band. So if you're a little aggressive with the volume of your cymbals, just crank them down a notch for that one gig that you're playing. And then when you go back home and you're playing in your basement again, you can turn up the cymbals again. This is something that I had to do myself. Again, I just really like loud cymbals and I had to force myself to turn the cymbals down because they just don't sound that great in a mix. You need to have your snare and your kick drum a little more out there in front of all the other parts of your drum set. The next thing is don't go crazy when you're EQing your drums. If you're using an electronic drum set module, chances are you can EQ either your entire kit or individual pieces of your kit. And depending on the speakers at the venue you're playing at, they may not be able to handle um, the EQ setup that you have for your drums. I once played at a venue where just my kick drum and my floor toms were just the low end was cranked up so much that the speakers couldn't handle it. So I had to quick go cut out the lows of the entire drum set so that you know the PAs could handle my drums. I just used to be really, really bad at EQing my drums. I've learned to be a little more conservative when I EQ my drums now. Make sure the highs don't go up too high because they'll just be way too shrill. They may sound okay in your headphones, but when you play live out of some actual speakers, they may not sound good. And be slightly more conservative with your lows. Make sure that it's a focused sound that's coming out of the speakers, not just a giant booming sound every time you hit your kick drum or hit your floor toms. That's just the way I go about it. The next tip I have is make sure your drums aren't positioned too close to choir mics if you're playing at a church. I ran into this situation where the drum set, we set it up just way too close to the choir and even though electronic drums are supposed to be quiet, they're actually not because you're hitting them with a stick. So um, the choir mics were picking up the slapping sound of hitting the cymbals and everything. It just sounded awful because I was too close to the choir mics. So just make sure you're not just sitting right next to them. Try to move away a little bit if you can. Another tip to remember is that if you can control the ambience of the sound in your drum module, you may need to lay off a little bit because when you're cranking up the ambience when you're playing your basement with your headphones, oh, that's all well and good because the room has no effect on your drums. However, when you're playing your electronic drum set in a big uh, venue, um, all of a sudden your drums are getting reverb because you hit your drum, the sound bounces around the walls, and you have a natural reverb there. And if you have some sort of ambience effect or reverb in your drum module going cranked up at 11, that included with the sound of the room that you're in, it will just make your sound really unfocused and muddled. So whenever you're playing in a big venue, just turn down the ambience. You actually don't really need it that much. 
Another thing to remember is that since you play electronic drums, the sound man has complete control over how loud you are. And depending on the sound man, there are some sound men out there that just hate drummers. I just don't know how to explain it. They think that drums should be whisper quiet. There are some venues where the sound man is like that. So whenever you're sending out the signal to the soundboard, make sure that you're not giving him 100% of your drum volume. Um, that way, if you absolutely have to, and just the situation calls for it, you can turn up your drums a little bit in the middle of a song or something. Obviously, don't go crazy with this, don't go nuts. The sound man knows exactly what you are doing. But I don't give the sound man everything. I always leave myself a little bit of headroom so I can turn up the volume of my drums if I absolutely need to. The next two tips are probably the most important in this video. You need to either create a checklist of all the pieces of your drum set that you're bringing, or um, just triple, quadruple check your room before you leave because you'll always forget something unless you double check or triple check. I've done it so many times. It is absolutely embarrassing how many different pieces of my drum set I've forgotten to bring. Let's see, um, once I forgot to bring my power cord for my drum module. Um, I've forgotten to bring drumsticks, twice. I've forgotten to bring a kick drum pedal, twice. Um, it is crazy the amount of things that I've forgotten to bring because I didn't have like a checklist of things that I need to bring to the gig. And I was in a hurry because I woke up late or whatever. So just make sure you either get a checklist or you quadruple check um, wherever your drum set is to make sure you've left nothing behind. Make sure that you bring absolutely every part of your drum set. My next tip is to bring extra everything. Because I have a bit of a paranoia about forgetting things now, because obviously I need to so I can survive, I bring extra everything. I bring an extra power cord, I bring extra quarter inch cables, extra XLR cable, extra drum key, extra drum sticks. I brought an extra cymbal before. And it worked out because the cymbal um, I was using before broke um, right before a gig started and I had the extra cymbal to use in its place. I brought an extra drum pedal. Um, just bringing all kinds of extra stuff, you will never be sorry that you brought an extra cable. And it just gives you a little bit of peace of mind that even if I forget things, I've brought extra. And I don't know, for me, I always like to do that. Just makes me feel a little better when I arrive at the venue, knowing that a lot of things can go wrong, but I'm prepared for it. Another tip isn't actually even a tip, it's a necessity. If you're gonna play live, you need a direct box. Yes, I know that this is the basic, but some drummers don't know this if they're playing live for the first time. You need a direct box because what's coming out of your drum module is a quarter inch cable like this, coming from the master out of your drum module. You need a direct box because you can't plug this into the soundboard unless you're literally sitting right next to the soundboard. It's not a matter of just getting a longer quarter inch cable, it's a matter of that the longer the quarter inch cable is, um, the worse the sound is because this cord isn't made for long distances. That's why you need to get a direct box. What happens is you plug the cord inch cable into the direct box, and then you have an XLR cable that comes out the other side. You plug the XLR cable into the cable snake. Um, the keyboard player does this, the guitar player does this, the bass player does this, everyone does this. Now that you play electronic drums, you need a direct box. And even if you're uh, playing sounds triggered off of your laptop, such as Easy Drummer, um, you'll have to get something like a PCDI box. Uh, so let me explain. If you get a cord like this, you can plug it into the headphone jack of your laptop. So if you're triggering Easy Drummer 2, um, you plug this into the headphone jack of your computer, and then you plug in your XLR cord right here. All right, so you're good to go either way. Or even another possibility is just to get an adapter like this. So this is uh, eighth inch to quarter inch. So you plug that into there, and you can still plug into a regular direct box like this and then you plug this into the headphone port of your laptop. My last tip is don't rely on the monitors. We've all been there when we get to the gig and just for some reason, um, you had to start quick, you didn't really do a good sound check and bam, you can't even hear anyone while you're playing. So don't rely on the monitors. At least be able to hear yourself. So bring either in-ears or headphones. Bring a way that you will be able to hear yourself even if the monitors are turned off. Because obviously, 
um, you may not always have complete control over your monitor mix. You may have to, to like share it with one or two other players. Let's say you and the bass player have to share the same monitor and you want more of the drums and the bass player wants less of the drums, you're gonna have to come to a compromise with the bass player on how loud um, the bass and the singer and you are. So don't rely on the monitors. Make sure to always bring either your own headphones or your own in-ear monitors. So I hope this video helped. The main thing I want you to get out of this is that you need to over-prepare when you're playing live. A lot of things go wrong. I've had so many things go wrong at places that I've played, but as long as you over-prepare, you can always get out of it okay. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. I make a new video about electronic drums every single Sunday, sometimes an extra one in the middle of the week. I've got my drum news on Facebook, um, drum covers on Instagram, drum articles on my website. Check those out. Be sure to subscribe because I make new videos all the time, and that's the best way to get them. See you guys next week.